Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com, Julie's Stamping Spot. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so excited you're joining me. Leave me a comment, let me know what you're doing tonight, whether you're watching live or watching the replay. I'm so glad that you found me. Tonight I'm sharing lots, 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 lots of projects. I got my swap box ready. Lots of projects using some of the designer paper that's on sale in October. So all month long from October 1st through the 31st, um, Stampin' Up! is offering 15% off select designer paper. We got about half of them from the annual catalog and half are from the um, August to December mini catalog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think about half and a half, maybe a little more from the mini catalog. So tonight I'm going to share with you some card swap samples from my box using these designer papers that are on sale. And I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to focus tonight on the August through December mini catalog. I'll show you and we'll do projects with the annual catalog designer paper maybe next week. Uh, but tonight I'm going to show you some swap cards and three new projects that feature and focus on the designer paper. Do you guys like designer paper? You have to leave me a comment and let me know. Do you hoard your paper or do you use it? I know so many of you think it's too pretty to use, but you have to cut it up. You have to use it. Um, otherwise, it's just going to sit, and that's no fun at all. You have to share all those pretty designs with your, your friends and family. So I hope that my cards tonight will inspire you to use some of your designer paper. And if you're needing some designer paper, you can stock up uh, in my online store at Julie Day davison.com slash shop and all month long in October you're going to get automatically 15% off these select um, designer paper patterns. I'll go ahead and link this flyer in the video description when I'm done so if you're watching the replay it should already be there. I'll put the link to my online store there as well so that you can find all of these and get the ones that you need. Um, and while we're going tonight you're going to have to let me know which paper is your favorite. So if you really love a paper that I'm showing you make sure to give me thumbs up and hearts and love let me know. <laughs> I can't wait to see which ones are your favorite. All right, are you guys ready to get started? Yes, let's just jump right in. One of my favorite papers in the holiday catalog is Plaid Tidings, and I have used this one, I feel like, a lot. So you guys might have seen um, some of the cards I'm going to share tonight, but it's they're worth sharing again because this paper is just so versatile. So I forgot to just pull out one of each pattern, but you can see I'm just going to flip through really quick. The Plaid Tidings paper is a 6 by 6 paper, and it includes 12 double-sided patterns, which means there are... 24 different plaid patterns and you can see we have such a variety of colors there's some really great ones for fall some really beautiful patterns for um, Christmas winter even spring so I think you'll be really happy I've shared this project before but it just is such a great way to show off um, these designer papers. So these were just little note cards that I made. As a reminder, the designer paper on these note cards are three inches by five inches. No, I'm sorry. Three inches by four and a half inches. Um, and so I was able to get two from each designer paper, two cards, note cards, just really simple, but it just shows off how many different occasions you can use this paper for. So um, those were my little note cards and these note cards they fit perfectly in the um, mini paper pumpkin box. So it was actually designed to hold the note cards. These are in the annual catalog and they come in like a package of 10. So this is a really great thing to get um, to make up gift sets. So um, the plaid paper is perfect for that because it's got cards for every occasion. I'm going to share with you some more cards using the plaid paper. Um, and again, I may have shown these before, but they're just so um, so awesome and show off the versatility of the paper pack. So this card is by Don Olszewski and she used a little bit of cherry cobbler back there. This one I'm going to set aside because I want to show you these last. This is the, the stamp set and bundle I'm going to use for the card I'm going to show you tonight. I am obsessed with this card. I made this one with the um, In the Pines bundle and I just love this designer paper. It set the color um, scheme for the whole card and I just love it. 
Carm Cake Cherry Cobbler Shaded Spruce. Here's one by Jennifer Cotton, and she used the new gift bow punch and made it look like a gift, and I would love to get a gift with that paper. That just makes me want to sit by a fire. I use the same paper on this card. I used the In the Pine dies to create that die cut tree and then added the embossed um, sentiment over it. Uh, my mom, Susan LaCroix, made this card using this autumn set. And look at this gorgeous cinnamon cider plaid. Oh, it just feels so crisp and makes me want to go for a walk. <laughs> Oh, you guys know I love fall. I love, love, love this card too. This one is by Brandy Barnard and she just used a little bit. You don't have to like overwhelm the card with too much plaid, just a little bit. So she used a little strip on the side and then this embossing folder that I'm obsessed with, Tasteful Textile from the annual catalog. Just so much texture on this card. I love, love, love it, love it. This one is by Rayanne Littrell, and she used the Love of Leave um, stamp set with the stitched dies, and then just a little panel, two inches by guessing four inches on this one, so you could get three pieces. Um, actually, four pieces to your um, designer paper piece. And then this is one I showed just a couple weeks ago, the Dutch Door card using a little bit of that plaid tidings designer paper and the have a hoot stamp set so you can use this plaid paper with any stamp set i feel like you could just go in so many different directions with this so that's the plaid paper like i said i'm totally obsessed <laughs> so the stamp set i'm going to use for this first card is the Celebration Tidings stamp set. And this is a favorite because it includes lots of different occasions. So you've got some pumpkins, a spider web and spider. You've got the little branches and then the heart. My stamp set is a little dusty. Little heart and the swirlies that you can use for Valentine's Day. So you've got um, fall and autumn, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, and Valentine's Day all in this one set. And then it has coordinating dies, which have these um, really cool labels. And um, I used the second smallest one on this card. So I'm going to show you how to make this card. And I picked out a different plaid paper and color scheme to go with it. Now the smallest label is what I used on this card. So you can see these labels are really big. And they're actually intended to be folded over and made into tag toppers. Maybe not the small ones so much as the large ones. But this largest die is actually bigger than a piece of... Um, um, it's bigger than a card front so <laughs> it's too big for a card but um, if you can cut it with a piece of the 6x6 six six paper and create a little tag topper that then you can use to decorate a gift bag so um, these are really fun and let me I'm, just, I'm curious to see how big the second biggest one is so it 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 would take up most of the card, but it would fit on um, on a on a card, the biggest one. But I I focused on the um, the smaller one. So this is the very smallest, the Halloween card, and then this is the second smallest. And I made both of these cards, and then there's the Christmas card, all using the same stamp set. The Christmas card is by Donald Shevsky. So let me get out the stamps here, and we're going to stamp. Um, and color in with some blends. Now, um, I really love this green and the blue. I think that the Pretty Peacock is a really pretty color for um, fall and one that I don't always think of using. Uh, but I thought I would try a little bit more traditional color um, option here. So this one is using pumpkin pie and then I, I pulled the designer paper and we've got some Cajun craze and um, like rich raspberry in there. So I'm going to try to add a little rich raspberry when I color the pumpkins this time. Now um, this one, like many of the stamps in this set, are meant to be stamped like twice. Like I, I stamped this one twice to sort of frame the label. Um, we have two different stamp images that are going to fit into the label here. This one can stamp multiple um, ways to stamp on a valentine. Let me show you really quick. Um, I better cover this before I 
put something I don't mean to in there. Um, the plaid tidings is toward the back. And um, I, I don't have any Valentines made up with it, but I just want to show you really quick. Um, I thought it was towards the back. Here we go. So here you can see these tag toppers. And then here are some ways that they used the Valentine stance. Again with the plaid. This is on page 56 and 57 of the mini catalog. So if you don't have a mini catalog and you're not working with another demonstrator already, I'd be happy to send you one. So just leave a comment and I'll get in touch with you. Um, and I can get this catalog out to you. This is good. It just started in August and it's good all the way through the end of December. I think technically like the first couple days of January. Um, but we've got lots more time to get all of our favorites from this catalog. Okay, for this card, you wanna start by stamping the Always Grateful in the middle because that we want to have that centered. And the other things, if you try to stamp them first, you might not space it out right. So I would recommend stamping the um, sentiment in the center and then you can stamp above and below it the other images. And I'm using the Memento Black ink pad. This is the one that you're going to want to use when you're coloring with Stampin' Blends. Our Stampin' Blends come in duos. They come in light and dark. But I realized when I pulled out my markers, either I've lost a marker or I only bought the dark of the Rich Razzleberry. I'm kind of confused, but I did just have a little... Um, oopsie, they all fell out of the, <laughs> they all fell out of the, um, my little case the other day. And so it's possible that one of them, um, ended up falling somewhere that I didn't see. So tonight I'll just be using the dark, but if you buy the, um, the blends, they're going to come, come in pairs so hard sometimes I feel like to color on camera <laughs> so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some of these leaves green and then some of them purple and I guess I need to get out um, a brown for the stem do you guys carve pumpkins that's something that I love to do. And um, the last couple years that we've been waiting until the last minute to get our pumpkins, I don't think we actually carved any last year. We waited much too far until the last minute. And that was, that was really sad. So I'm, we're gonna have to make sure we get some pumpkins a lot earlier this year. I like to carve them, not because I like to decorate with pumpkins, but because <laughs> I like to eat pumpkin seeds. Do you guys like pumpkin seeds? Um, we roast them in the oven after we're done carving. So that is my job. My husband does all the carving with the kids and I am in charge of cleaning the seeds and getting everything roasted up to enjoy afterwards. All right, I'm going in with the rich razzleberry. Like I said, I don't have the light. I only have the dark. So normally I would start with the light and then add like little touches of the dark. But I think this is going to work out okay. I just love the little little splash of um a razzleberry don't you do you love it let's do some layering here i'm going to tell you the measurements as i go um i actually had this pre-cut in my box and i thought oh i'll just do this tonight this piece of rich razzleberry cardstock is three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches this is a layer that i use a lot i like it because it gives a generous border of the card base um, and then I like to put a strip across it. So this piece of designer paper is one and a half by five and a half. And again, this is the plaid tidying designer paper. And then um, just for like an accent color, I'm just using crumb cake. 
And so this is a half inch by five inches. And then I cut the little banner tips on the side. On this card, I used old olive, pumpkin pie, and early espresso. And then our label is going to go on with Stampin' Dimensionals. That was not quite centered. So let's grab some Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm realizing I talked so much about centering everything so that the spacing would be right. And I think still somehow I, I ended up being very crowded at the top. And I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe I just needed to come down farther on this one. But you know what? We're going to add some twine to just distract <laughs> from all that space. My twine is a mess. It started to unravel and I need to I need to unravel it so I can re-ravel it. Get some scissors. Twine is my go-to um, trim, especially in the fall. It is just perfect when you need to add just a little something. So I'm just going to add that with a glue dot, and I feel like that ties in the crumb cake really nicely. Okay, so I'm going to put this on with a glue dot, but then you have to tell me which of these that you like better. Do you prefer the peacock, the blue plaid, or do you like the orange and razzleberry? This or that? Leave a comment, let me know. I'm gonna choose one person um, who comments to receive my rich razzleberry card. So let me know which one you like. And um, I'll do the drawing um, like after the video. I'm not going to try to do it live because I always miss comments and I don't see everybody's. So um, when everything is over, I will go back and I'll look at the comments and I'll put everybody's name in a drawing. So let me know this or that. Do you like the green and the orange or the orange and the purple? Um, I wasn't sure I was going to like the purple, but uh, now that it's done, I kind of do. I don't know. I, I felt like it might be washed out, you know, with the lighter, the lighter plaid, but it really is striking, I think, to have that purple. Oh, I see a lot of that. <laughs> a few this is. I, I can't tell from looking. Okay. No, never mind. I can tell from looking. <laughs> it looks like Rich Razzleberry definitely has, um, <laughs> has you guys. Loving that one. Okay, I'm looking back at comments I see Eva said. Um, so I hadn't used my blends for a while, and now I'm using them, and they've dried up. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's not a good sign. I, I, I'm not sure, Eva. I'll have to look at your complete comment because I can't read the whole thing right now. I don't think that there is a way to refresh them. They're made to be consumable, so, like, when they dry up, then they're... Um, they're not good anymore. I don't, there's not a way to refill them. They're alcohol markers. So you want to make sure that when you're done using them, that you have your marker on really tight. Because if you don't um, close your marker all the way, then, you know, air can get in there and dry it out. So um, definitely make sure they're closed and nice and tight. And I'm not sure if you have any of these, Eva, or if you only have the Stampin' Blends, but we did have um, some alcohol markers a few years ago that were called blendabilities and they found that there was some, um, some issues with the, um, the caps had like these microscopic holes that were causing the markers to dry out. So if, if it says Stampin' Blends, then it's the newer one. If it says blendabilities, those are the old ones and they're definitely, um, definitely going to dry out and have issues. Okay. Are you guys ready to move on? 
let's um, let's show you some more cards. So we looked at the plaid paper. The next paper, and these are all the ones that, if, if you're tuning in late, all the papers that I'm sharing tonight are um, on sale in October. You can save 15%. So the next one is the Magic in the Night designer paper. This is a 12 by 12 paper. I've cut it down to six by six so that you can see, but this is the Halloween paper. Um, but it has, I think, a lot of possibilities. Maybe not the bat side, but like the black and white floral. This is very fallish and not overly Halloween. Um, so I think that it has some some nice B sides that um, have some good potential. Um, and it's a very like sort of goth Halloween paper. It's not very like cutesy and sweet, but it just sort of has some some different I love the colors peacock rich razzleberry um pumpkin pie really really pretty so I only have a couple samples these are swap cards because I haven't done anything with this designer paper but I thought these were beautiful cards I gotta open up this one this one's by Kelly Atchison and I think it yeah it has like a little fun fold so it has just like a long card on the front but she's used the designer paper beautifully to show off um, what you can do with it. And then this one is by Susan Elise Morton. And she also used three pieces of the designer paper. It looks like they are maybe one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch. Not, but not by one and a quarter inch. One and a quarter by five inches is my guess. And then she's got the stamped image there. So this is more of a fall card and this is definitely more Halloween, but you can see it works both ways. All right, so the next paper is, oh, this one's pretty. This one is called, I have to look, have to look at the flyer because I don't know all these names, Heartwarming Hugs. This also is a 12 by 12 designer paper. I've cut it down to six by six so you can see, but you can see these are very traditional colors, old olive, um, mossy meadow, and real red. And so we've got just some really great like patterns. We've got stripes and polka dots um, that you can use with almost any stamp set to make your Christmas cards. So here are a bunch of different cards that were created by other demonstrators using this designer paper. This one is by Dina Rikau. And then I love, I never would have thought of using it with the snowman. This one's by Joyce Ferraco. I love how she incorporated the little gems in there and the ribbon that just sort of make the snowman pop, even though she didn't color the snowman at all. You could color if you wanted to. You could color a little green or a little red on the scarf to make that pop and go with the paper. Here's a cute one from Mary McNeely who used the Gnome for the Holidays stamp set. In fact, here's another one. This one's by Sandy Carlson. She also used Gnome for the Holidays. And what a great way to coordinate and dress up those little gnomes. I think this one is a gift card holder. Um, it has a little, yeah, a little flap here, and then you can tuck your gift card inside. So this is a fun card. So that's just sort of the front of the card folded back, and then she added like a circle punch for that. Really easy card there, and these gnomes are so cute. So if you're looking for a traditional holiday paper, this Heartwarming Hugs is a good one because it has some really great... Um, small patterns, Christmassy patterns, Christmas colors, very traditional. Um, do you guys like this paper? This one is also a Christmas paper, but not as traditional as far as red and blue. It does have a little red, I'm not red and blue, red and green. It does have a little holly in here and the berries. This is the poinsettia, um, what is it called? Poinsettia Place, Poinsettia Place. Um, and this is also a 12 by 12 paper, but I've cut it down just to show you all the patterns. So um, again, these are double-sided sheets and we have a much more sort of neutral color going on here with the soft yellow. We've got like so saffron and bumblebee going on with the old olive shaded spruce, little soft suede in there. We do have some reds, but not on the poinsettias. So these are, are more of the lighter color, like white poinsettias and the B sides are gorgeous. Really, really love these. So I have a few cards to share using the poinsettia place designer paper. 
This is one that we made. It was a mystery stamping card a few weeks ago or last month. And so we've got the designer paper that kind of folds out. So this piece is um, three inches by nine inches, no, four inches by nine inches. And then it just sort of has an accordion fold. And then here's one I made with a double flap card and I used two different patterns of that paper. This is another one I created using that designer paper. I stamped this in early espresso and then sponged a little bit of So Saffron and colored in with the Bumblebee marker. And then I also created this card. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> These were all different um, mystery stamping cards. This is one of the cut apart cards, right? So we cut the middle and then we turned it and made the tag. And so this is one of the paper from the poinsettia. So again, you don't have to use it just with the poinsettia. Um, if you don't have the poinsettia stamp set, like you can just use the images, you know, and then add your own sentiments or use it with other stamp sets like I've done here with the moose. So this is gorgeous paper. I don't think I've used it a whole lot yet, but now that it's October, I feel like I'm ready to really dig into my Christmas card crafting. Have you guys been making a lot of Christmas cards yet? Um, I know some of you are done. I, I haven't even thought about it. I've thought briefly that I need to do a photo shoot with the kids, but I haven't, I haven't thought about how I'm going to do or what I'm going to do for my cards. I guess I really need to think about it. Um, all right. The next one is one of my favorite papers from the mini catalog. This one is called Snowflake Splendor. Again, this is a 12 by 12 paper and I've cut it down to six by six to show you. Linda says she's made 83 Christmas cards already. That's awesome. How many do you send Linda? Are you all done with your cards? Or are you going to make some more? Um, this 12 by 12 paper has really gorgeous blues and purple in it too. So we've got Pacific Point, Pool Party, Balmy Blue, Misty Moonlight, um, and then Highland Heather is the, um, the purple as well as Purple Posy. So these sort of wa watercolor background images, you've just got all kinds of different colors and effects like on every single piece. I just feel like they're so gorgeous. I don't want to cover them up because... They're just so beautiful. And this paper, it does have a coordinating um, bundle with the snowflakes and the dyes, but these are gonna work for any Christmas. So I've got some samples to show you from other demonstrators that use other stamp sets. So here's the snowman again. This one, if I remember right, is Diana Gibbs, and I just love her beautiful coloring on here. She's done a little bit of watercolor around the edges, of the snowman isn't that just gorgeous and then the strip of designer paper and the stamped trees on the purple posy i'm obsessed with this card <laughs> i don't have this one yet but uh diana's card is definitely making me wish that i did oh my <laughs> Just uh, you guys are awesome. I'm looking at your comments and rolling in as I'm going through the cards. And Linda said she'll make up to 100. Diana said she makes 175. What? Uh, all from finished card friends. That's amazing. Um, I one year I did make like 250 cards, and I sent them to all of our family and friends and my customers and. Um, that was before I had four kids, <laughs> although now the kids can help me. So <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll have to endeavor that sometime doing a big family project. Um, love, love, love this card. Kate Kaltoff, um, created this one. You got a little bit of the designer paper back there. And so I just want to show you, like you can mix and match with so many different stamp sets. So this is the Dove stamp set. This one is by, um, Tracy Jacobs. And she's using the little fun polar bear with a bit of designer paper back here. Um, this is one that I created. Again, I think this is a mystery, a mystery stamping card, the double Z fold. I got the designer paper and then the embossing folder. I think the rest are all using the Snowflake Splendor, the Snowflake Wonder stamp set. This fun fold is Gwen Duckworth's creation. Beautiful bit of designer paper back there. Um, here's another double fold card that I used. And um, the this front part is stamped, but the designer paper here, um, I think it just is such a beautiful background. Like, you know, there's not even any stamping on it, but it's just a really beautiful um, piece to have in the background there. 
love the way that turned out. And then we've got this one by Jenny Miller. Beautiful with the designer paper in the background. Here's one I created. I just don't love it. Um, I embossed with the silver, but I feel like you can't see it very well. Maybe I should have done white instead. But I used the frame from the Snowflake Wishes bundle. That is so pretty. It cuts out just parts of the um, snowflakes and then the stitched frame. Really love the way that turned out. Um, this one is by Laura Burkett and she used a strip here. So you don't need a lot of the designer paper. Like there's so many different ways you can cover the whole card or use just little strips down the side. So many different ways and so many different stamp sets that you can use. Um, this one is by Meg Loven. Um, and she did the designer paper and die cut and then stamped and die cut um, the snowflakes. So lots of different ways lots of different blues like so the card i'm going to make tonight i was really having a hard time choosing what blues to use because there's so many in the card so let me get out this um let me get out this um the project pieces so we're going to do a fun fold card and i cut a piece of designer paper that is eight by eight so like i said this designer paper comes in 12 by 12 so i just cut four inches off the top and the side um, and then we're going to use the snowflake wishes stamp set with the coordinating dies and these are really really pretty uh, we've got some detailed die cuts some die cuts that cut out the stamped images and here's the die that i just showed you that cuts out the um the label with the sort of half snowflakes on the side okay so um we're going to start let me i got one more little piece here we're starting with the um the eight by eight paper and i <laughs> i haven't made this card i kind of planned it out but i haven't made a sample yet so Hopefully it turns out. Um, I have made this style of card before, but just not with this paper and recently. So we're going to take this into paper trimmer and we're going to um, take it to four inches and do a score line down the side. And then we're gonna turn it and line it up at four inches and do a score line at the side. I suppose if you don't have a paper trimmer, you can just fold it in half and then fold it in half again the other way. And then we're going to take um, on the diagonal, line up the diagonal in the cutting track and score on the diagonal. So it is, um, we've got one full square on each corner and then the, the squares that are diagonal. So that's it for the scoring. You score it in half and in half and then diagonal. Excuse me, I got a little tickle in my throat. Mm, I'm not sure where that came from. Okay, now we're going to just cut, or not cut, fold on the score lines. If you have a um, bone folder, this is a good time to just get a nice good fold. Um, <laughs> Tiana, why are you scared of the snowflakes? You don't want it to snow yet? Last year we had snow in October here in central Illinois. I'm not ready for snow necessarily. I am enjoying the cooler weather, but um, it's a little early for snow. And truth be told, I don't really love the snow. <laughs> I like it to snow on Christmas Day, but after that it can stop and go away. <laughs> I just want a white Christmas. Okay, so I folded all the score lines. Now we're going to... Um, we're gonna bring in these sides so that they're, we're folding on the score line and creating sort of like this explosion card. So when you open it, whoa, it, it explodes. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use, part of this is gonna be the front and the other is gonna be the inside. So I guess that's the way. Yeah, that's the only way for it to open. Okay, so this is going to be the front. And on the front, um, I didn't want to cover up all this really pretty paper. So I decided to use a layer that is a piece of vellum. And then um, I have a, a strip to stamp the sentiment. And I die cut um, some snowflakes with pool party. That's the color I decided on. I couldn't decide because it has both balmy blue and pool party in here. So um, I thought I would I would keep this really kind of simple on the front because I want the paper to really um, 
to shine. So we're going to stamp, um, I think I'm going to do a, the darker blue. We're going to stamp a sentiment, Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas. I'm choosing the dark blue, this is Misty Moonlight, because the snowflakes are die cut in the lighter blue, so I just kind of want it to contrast a little bit. Now, we can see adhesive through the vellum, which is unfortunate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere, um, I'm going to glue down Where's my adhesive? The banner onto the vellum, and then I can put adhesive underneath the banner, and um, and have that be attached to the card. Oops, actually, before I stick that down, I want to put. But I use a glue dot here. I'm gonna put the. Um, oh, little tear. I'm gonna put this down first onto the vellum and then this is going to go over it my um, paper strip is one inch by I think I did four inches and then I just cut the the ends I was trying to decide for um I was trying to decide on um, an embellishment, and I'm gonna, I don't know, we, we can see through it. Is that a bad thing? Is it going to be the same color as the paper? So maybe it'll be okay? I think so. I'm going to go with it. So I know that this is not, like, the top isn't going to be adhered down, but the bottom is, and that's going to hold it just fine. Okay, if, if this bothers you, you can use some adhesive there. I just don't want it to show. And actually, so you could hide that with an embellishment. So I was trying to decide between the blue adhesive-backed gems and the adhesive-backed sequins. I feel like these might be a little dark, although now that I've added the, um, now that I've added the dark, um, words. Maybe it's not so bad. What do you think? Are these too dark? Or are they, are they okay? That seems out of place. I know we usually do two, but, or three, but I think, oh, what did I, uh-oh. I can't tell what happened to my stamped image. Well, we're going to have to go on without it. I suppose I could put like another die cut here or some more gems. My idea was that if I put something up here, then I could put a glue dot underneath this and the sequin would hide it. See, like that. Okay, I feel like we really need some contrasting, that's navy. I feel like we need a little strip of blue, yeah? Do you guys agree with me? <laughs> Too bad, I'm doing it. Um, I'm just gonna do like a, oh, a thin little strip of, um, I'm just going to do like this is Misty Moonlight which is the same color of ink that I used and just going to add a little kind of tuck it under here maybe I won't even do an angle What do you think? <laughs> I'm all over the place. I think that's good. A little punch of color. Okay, so then for the inside, 
I am going to do, I have a piece of Whisper White, and this is going to go here. So the inside words say, um, in the coldest moments of the year, my heart is warm because you're near. So that's going to go right there. And then I have some snowflakes to stamp. And... I'm just picking the colors right from the designer paper. So we've got, um, this is Pool Party and Highland Heather. And look at how pretty that looks, just bringing out the designer paper. You guys saw I stamped without a, <laughs> I stamped without a grid paper. i me just wipe my table. Sometimes I'm so lazy about doing it the right way. <laughs> Should we add some more snowflakes, though? I kind of feel like we could stamp some um, snowflakes on the paper and really just customize that. Yes. Yes! I love it! <laughs> Oh, that's a really stiff pad. I could not get that one closed. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is just to glue on this inside piece. And, um, and then I'll show you the finished card. Okay. All right, there's the front again, and we see this beautiful paper that shines through, and it opens up. So this will fit. If you want to, you could use like a ribbon to hold it closed, and I did actually get out my ribbon, not the green one. Um, I <laughs> I'm not tearing apart this card. If I, if I did tear it apart, I would put the ribbon underneath and add, um, and add, oh, can we go, ooh, hold on, because we put this on dimensionals, we could technically do this. We could add the ribbon around it like that. So it's, it's on the outside and then it's under the vellum. And then, like, if you want to keep it closed. If you want the ribbon to show more, <laughs> then you could you could put it on better before you put on your other elements. And you could tie. This is a really stiff ribbon, but it does, it does tie a bow. So, will this fit in a regular envelope? Let me get one out and show you. Because the finished card is 4x4, four four, then it's going to fit in a regular envelope. The only thing that's going to be an issue is <laughs> the ribbon. The ribbon sticking out. But if you don't do ribbon and you just have it be, these are so delicate. Oh my goodness. I would probably go back with some liquid glue and really um, glue that down better so that it's not it's not up all over the place. So like, a, um, where's my liquid glue? It's on the floor somewhere. I'll do it later. But I would go back with some fine tip glue or some green cap multi-purpose glue and just glue down the ends of those so they're not, it's a very delicate die cut and without it being glued down, it's gonna break, no doubt about it. All right, what do you think? Do you like the way that turned out? The ribbon is not ombre, it is iridescent. Um, this is in the mini catalog. It's called Snowflake Splendor. And so it just has like that that iridescent kind of a um, a sheen to it. And it's very, it's like a very stiff ribbon. You can tie a bow with it, but it's, it, it's a very stiff bow. Um, can you hear that? <laughs> um, it's it's really pretty. It's not wired, even though it has the stiffness of like a wired ribbon. Um, but it's really pretty. Really pretty ribbon. Very, very stiff. Okay, so 
That's our Snowflake Wishes card. You can do this with any designer paper, um, and you can do it any size. In fact, I just stuck one away today. This must be what, um, this must be what I thought of. Can I pull it out? Oh, I see it. Uh, this one I found on my floor and it reminded me of this little explosion. So this is a three by three created from a six by six piece of cardstock or designer paper with the everything is rosy if you remember that. Um, so this one, same thing, you're just doing it in half. So six inches and then this one is eight inches. And for this one, I did a belly band. So that would be a fun thing to put on your card as well to hold it closed instead of ribbon is to do a belly band. I guess I should have thought of that. Okay, do, I create cards and then like I just constantly revise and revise and revise. So I'll have to do another version of a snowflake card and do a belly band or ribbon or something and be more intentional <laughs> about it. But that's my card for now. Let's move on. I've got some other swap cards to show you and then one more card I'm going to demonstrate. The next designer paper from um, the sale, again, these are all on sale in October. You can save 15% on select designer paper in the online store uh, at juliedavison.com slash shop if you'd like to shop with me. Um, and so the next paper is called Tis the Season. This is also from the August to December mini catalog. This is a six by six paper. So you get 12 different double-sided patterns and um, the package has four sheets of each kind. So, so many patterns. Again, this is a traditional red and green Christmas. We've got cherry cobbler and shaded spruce, and then um, really kind of traditional patterns. And then on the flip side, we have some more red and green. We got some trees in here. This is my favorite with the candy canes. Um, just lots of lots of gorgeous traditional kinds of um patterns and paper. So this one I think is I feel like a little more um of a traditional Christmas, whereas the colors and patterns in this one, the heartwarming hugs, is maybe more of a modern red and green Christmas. So they're both red and green, um, different reds and greens. Um but you definitely have more of like a modern and more of a traditional vibe. So this one's called Tis the Season. And like I said, it is a 12 by or 6 by 6 paper pack. I only have a few cards using this one. This is one, again, we shared this recently. This is the Dutch Door card. Um, and using the Merry Hello host stamp set. But I used two different patterns here. My favorite. Um candy canes and then the plaid is also in this paper pack and then this one is case from the catalog and I created this one oh Christmas mean, means more I think that's the name of the stamp set it's got different quotes from movies um so it's kind of fun and then some ribbon and then the red rhinestones here these are just um one and a quarter inch by five inches of designer paper so these two are paper and this one I stamped um, here's another card. This is one of those cut apart cards. Again, we did this one for mystery stamping um, where you cut the middle. So you, um, you cut and then I turned this and die cut it with the tag die and then created the bridge between those. This plaid paper is in the paper pack. And I must be obsessed with the plaid because here's another card <laughs> using a Merry Hello and the, the plaid paper. So this is another one that's on sale. Um, the next paper is the twelve, 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 twelve tidings, and this is a carryover. This was in the paper. This was in the uh, blah, 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 the mini catalog last year, and it's back and it's included in the paper sale. So this is a twelve by twelve paper. This one is kind of fun because we've got green and vanilla on one side, and the same pattern in red and vanilla on the other. So you heard me correctly, it's stripes on one side, stripes on the other side, just in the other color. So each pattern is on the other side in the other color. So you've got sort of these traditional toile um, um, 
images and drawings. So it features a lot of like countryside barns and houses, trees, traditional like carolers and ice skaters. We've got some foliage um, and then some animals as well. So I don't have any cards, unfortunately, made with this paper, and it's not really my cup of tea, so I haven't challenged myself yet um, to craft with it, but I have seen some gorgeous cards. There were some really beautiful ones last year, so if this is your thing, you definitely want to make sure to get this this month while it's on sale. All right, our last paper, and again, I'm only doing papers from the mini catalog, so in this sale, there are papers from the annual catalog, like the Artistry Blooms, Forever Greenery, Peony Garden, Whale of a Time, um, In Good Taste, and Playing with Patterns and Playful Pets. Those are also on sale. I'll showcase those next week uh, for Thursday Night Stamp Therapy, so tune in next week to see all of my swap cards using those papers from the annual catalog. Uh, but tonight I'm just focusing on the mini catalog papers. So the last one I'm gonna show you tonight is Trimming the Town designer paper. And this is also a 12 by 12 designer paper. I've cut it down um, to six by six so that it's just easier to show on camera. But I have to show you this one because it's part of a larger design. So this is the 12 by 12 design and it's like a whole scene. So I feel like you could just even frame that. This would be really cool for a scrapbook page. Like the whole paper is one page and you can add, you know, your pictures or whatever of a winter trip. Um, and then it also has other images in it like the houses and the people and the wreaths and the trees and some more houses. And then the B side patterns are really bright and fun. We've got um, the stripes and polka dots and snowflakes. And that reminds me, I forgot to pull out a card that I used this paper on because it wasn't with the stamp set. So let me just grab that really quick from my box. Here's the card I made. I used that B-side pattern to make like a birthday card. And I showed this one, I think, before as well. But just a different way to use this paper. So it doesn't have to be for Christmas. But here are some swap cards that I received. This one's by Amy Story. And she's used um, the people and then stamped the car and the tree. And this one is by my sister, Amy LaCroix Slocum. And she used the trees and then stamped the car and the tree. Um, so I just got this bundle. And um, I haven't had a chance to create with it yet. So tonight is going to be my first coming home card <laughs> using, um, using this bundle. And this is a special stamp set because it is one of the Making a Difference stamp sets that Stampin' Up! has done. So let me... Um, let me pull open this page and show you some more samples with it too. Okay, so if you have the mini catalog, this is on page 24, 25, 26. Um, so you can see all the beautiful samples here, stamped and colored and die cut all the ways that they use the designer paper. So here's where it talks about the making a difference. So if you, when you purchase the coming home stamp set or the coming home bundle with the dies included, Stampin' Up! is going to donate $3 to charities devoted to adoption, foster care, and infertility. So they do this every once in a while. I would say once a year they have a special stamp set, a special campaign where they choose a new charity or a new cause. So last year we had um, I think it was mental health was the cause that they were supporting with a stamp set sales. So this is the one that they're doing today and I, or this year, and I, I really love it. So I bought my bundle and they'll donate $3 for me for that bundle. Um, so if you want to participate in, um, in contributing to that cause and making a difference through your stamp purchase, then you could consider getting the coming home bundle as well. Um, okay, so let's... Let's start. I wanted to show you that the dies die cut the paper. I love it when they do this. So I use the dies and I die cut some houses and a tree. And so I'm not really sure how this is going to come together yet <laughs> because I didn't do a practice. 
but um let's let's just kind of make it up as we go so i wanted to incorporate the stamps even though i did die cut the houses i wanted to incorporate the stamps and so i'm going to use um the pool party ink i chose my colors based on the designer paper um and i've got a little strip here this is one inch by um five and a half inches this is the other side of the houses and um, this is going to go at the bottom about a half an inch or so I guess that's more like a quarter a quarter inch and then I'm just gonna stamp a row of houses now I could use a bigger one but I was concerned that it would be too big so I'm gonna stick with just doing a row of the small houses and then I have a square and I was thinking I could um, layer layer the house on here so I think these are great for Christmas but I think also that the color could work for like you know happy new house kind of thing um, you know or just like a you know, welcome to the neighborhood. If you have a new neighbor, um, you could make up a card with the houses. That would be really cute. Just had a quick thought. I die cut this one and it's the same as the stamp. And so you could do like a whole row that's stamped, you know, um, and then sort of highlight the one house. Like, so that could be a welcome to the neighbor card. I kind of like that, but I think I'm going to stick with the larger, the larger image here and then this one doesn't have any words so I pulled in the banner year and I chose from all of us because at my house there's all of us we have a lot <laughs> there's six of us at my house so I thought it would be an, a good sentiment that would work for some different occasions so I'm gonna stamp this at the bottom and I'm thinking actually that I might make my um, I think I might do my square just a little bit smaller so I'm gonna get the paper cutter back out and I'm just gonna trim a quarter inch so right now this square is two and three quarters and I'm gonna go to two and a half by two and a half and so that means I'm gonna take a half inch or quarter inch off of the early espresso as well to make that two and three quarter by two and three quarter Ugh, I need to change my trimmer blade. I'm starting to get like fuzzy, fuzzy sides. Okay. That way I can see more of the houses in the background. I think I like the tree in here, just like for a pop of green. So let's go ahead and add these with some Stampin' Dimensionals. You guys are quiet. What do you think of the Coming Home bundle? Do you like that one? Maybe it hasn't caught your eye yet. I know sometimes there's just so much to like from that catalog. It's hard to it's hard to prioritize and, you know, get everything because you have to, well, I mean, you only have so much money, right? <laughs> I don't have a bunch of money, so that's why I didn't get this one right away. I kind of waited. Um, I feel like it needs something, though, don't you think? Like, so here, there's some ribbon that goes with this designer paper, and it's a two-pack, and it's a hot mess on my, on my desk right now. Um, it has the red and the green, which coordinates with the paper, so we could incorporate maybe a little bit of green ribbon in here, and I think that would tie in the green from the tree a little bit. I like that idea, so let's see what that looks like. Oops. 
I think that's sweet. Do you like it? I'm debating on this tree. Like, I, I kind of feel like I needed to add another tree. Like, one tree doesn't feel like enough. Where's my paper at? Um, let's just do a quick hand cut on this. There is a die for the tree. But my die cutting machine is on the floor, so. Oh, yes. The wreath in the circle window. Mary, you're brilliant. Okay, let me finish cutting this and maybe we'll want, maybe we'll want two trees and a wreath. I have to locate a wreath from the paper. I bet that there's a die for that wreath as well. If we do two trees and a wreath, then that would be like three, right? We always like to do our elements in three. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's like it was made to go up there. Let's see if there's a die really quick. Of course there is. Of course there's a die. Now, I'm, <laughs> I am going to use the die for the wreath because this is really tiny. Look at that, it just fits perfect. Okay, hold on one second. Oh my gosh, okay, this one is so small. Guys, you have to be careful not to throw that out because I could totally see that happening. Very dangerous. Put it away right away <laughs> before it sticks to something or stays in your paper or gets thrown out. I love that. I think that was the perfect suggestion. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, and I think we're good. Let's nail this down. Okay, so I've got some of this down. I'm going to add the rest with glue dots. And the tree back here, I think I like it. <laughs> Bonnie says she didn't think she liked this stamp set, and I have convinced her otherwise. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> That's always the case. I always see some kind of beautiful card and then I need something I didn't think I needed. So if it makes you feel better, it happens to me too. <laughs> okay, are two trees too much, you guys? What do you think about the two trees? Um, oh. This ribbon is everywhere. By the way, there is a wreath in the stamp set as well. So you can stamp, color, and die cut a wreath um, instead of just die cutting the paper. But I, this paper is really cute. Like even if you just get the paper um, without the stamp set and you just hand cut stuff, it's cute. It's cute. It's so cute. Uh, maybe should the ribbon be red? We might have to do two ribbons and you guys tell me what you like. There's now some red incorporated into the bow on the wreath. And so I'm wondering if we should switch the bow to red. But I like the green because I sort of like the combination of the green and the blue. Let's just give it a look and see. Yeah, oh, you guys are already thinking, yes, red. Oh. 
Okay, there it is with the red and with the green. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a minute, though a lot of you are already saying red. <laughs> Bonnie says red, Cindy says red, Janice says red, Susan says red, Eve says red. What would they look like tying them both together? Ooh. Uh, let's try it. I'm not gonna I'm gonna tie a new bow because I don't want to undo the bows I already tied. Is this too busy? I don't know if I like the double bow. <laughs> Many of you are saying red, so I think I'm going to go with the red. I'm I'm feeling like unsure about this tree placement. I think I like it better down there. Ooh, I see a double. Marsha likes a double. I like the single red because I think you can see more of the red and it ties in with the red bow on the wreath. So I'm going to go with the red. Final decision. Just do some trimming. We want to make sure our bow is even. And... Right on the corner. Oh, I love it! Ta-da! Oh, that turned out so good. Okay, so let's review really quick. This was the last card of the night. Tonight we made a plaid card with the um, Celebration Tidings stamp set. And then, oh, then we made our snowflake card. This is kind of our fun fold with the, with the pop out. And then we, at, we ended with a coming home card. So all of these use the designer paper that's on sale. And we looked at lots of swap cards too. So um, all these papers are on sale right now, 15% off the whole month of October. You can get them in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. Leave me a comment. Let me know which of the cards we made tonight is your favorite. Or maybe you had a favorite swap card that I showed um, that really inspired you. I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment. Let me know. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. Please join me next Thursday. I'll be sharing some more designer paper cards featuring stamp sets and designer paper from the annual catalog. So don't miss it. 7, 10 p.m. next week on Thursday. Until then, happy stamping.